ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Silas Logan had sold his holdings in Missouri and had talked some of his neighbors in Jefferson City into forming a wagon train and going west. Cy was put in charge of the wagons. And the night before the train's departure... One of the prominent men of the town visited Cy at his home. Cy, you are well liked in this town, and we're sorry to lose you. But uh, I'm sure you'll be successful in the West. Thanks, Will. From what I've heard, the far West is a place where anybody has a good chance if he's willing to work hard and put up with a rough life out there. <clears throat> Cy, I, uh, I didn't come here just to say goodbye. I, I came to ask a favor. Sure. What is it? Well, Dave, put it bluntly, I want you to take my son Ted along with you. <clears throat> Ted? Well, now, I haven't anything personal against the boy, Will. Yes, I know, but, I know. I... He has the reputation of being sort of a, well, stuck-up ne'er-do-well and all that, but uh, I figure if he went west, he might change. Frankly, he could do with a lot of changing from what I hear. I suppose it's my fault. I've let Ted have his own way since his mother died a few years ago. Now I realize that at the age of 21, he's nothing but a lazy spendthrift. You think going west would change that? Yes, I do. I'd, I'd pay enough to cover his share on the trip and give him only as much cash as he might need to get settled out there. I'll, leave. I'll tell him definitely that he can't appeal to me for any more. Yeah. How about it, Shy? Will you take the boy? Well, all right. But only on condition that he takes orders from me and does his share of the work along with the others. Make him understand that before we leave. Yes, of course I will, sir. The next day, the wagon train left Jefferson City, and in the many days that followed, Ted Harris made himself thoroughly disliked by everyone, except Silas Logan's 18-year-old daughter, Flora. Finally, the wagons crossed the Red River and moved slowly along the Butterfield Trail toward the southwest. 
Ted and Flora rode the seat of the lead wagon, while Cy Logan, on horseback, led the wagon train. Yeah. Oh. Flora was talking to Ted as they moved along. Ted, why don't you try to make people like you? You seem to go out of your way at times to turn the others against you. I don't care what anyone thinks of me, Flora, except you. But you must care. If you settle in the far west, you'll need friends, Ted. In the first place, if Dad thinks I'm going to settle in the west for any length of time, he's mistaken. In the second place, I didn't want to come out here at all. Then why did you? It was the only way to get Dad off my neck, that's why. I thought it might be interesting to come west with a wagon train, but I found out it's nothing but rough riding and hard work. The others aren't complaining, so why should you? Oh, they have wild ideas of going out west and making a good living. So they're willing to go through the hardships to get there. Sometimes, Ted, I I begin to dislike you almost as much as the others do. Flora, it's no use you getting peeved just because I say what I think. Stop the wagon! Stop the horses, Ted! Ho, ho, ho! ho. Ted! Ted, what are we stopping for? Ho, there! Ho, ho! I don't know yet, Flora. Something's wrong back there. Ho, ho, ho! Logan, the axle on my wagon's busted. Oh, that'll take some time to fix, Jake. Yeah, that's right. Well, we'll circle the wagons. Only a couple of hours before sundown, so we'll spend the night here. Circle the wagons! The wagons were drawn into a circle on hard, dry ground near a cliff. And some distance beyond, a wide, shallow stream separated the wagon train from the open prairie. That night, Jake sought out Cy Logan and took him aside for a private talk. Cy, I... Uh... I want to talk to you alone about something important. Well, nobody will hear us now. What is it, Jake? Well, for some reason, somebody's trying to delay this train. What? When I inspected that busted axle on my wagon, I found it had been partly sawed through. And then it busted when we hit a rough part of the trail. Are you sure about that? Yep. And I can't figure out who might have done it or why. Of course, that no good Ted Harris may be sore because I told him what I thought of him this morning. Oh, I don't believe Ted would do anything like that, Jake. But I'll talk to him anyway. I'll go find him right now. Cy looked about the camp for Ted, but he wasn't around. After his talk with Flora, Ted Harris did some serious thinking about what she had said. He had left the camp on horseback unobserved and had ridden for some distance along the trail in the moonlight. He turned off and rode to a low bluff overlooking a stream. Oh, 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 boy. He ground hitched his horse and walked to the edge of the bluff where he sat down and gazed at the water. As he sat in deep thought, Ted suddenly became aware that someone was talking just below the bluff. He crawled to the edge and peered over. Two figures were in the shadows. Nothing at all. Ted listened. I delayed the wagons by busting an axle so they had to camp for the night earlier than usual. Then I came here to meet you like we planned when we met a couple of nights ago. Yeah, that's good. It gives Chief time to get many braves together by dawn. Well, now wait until the wagons break camp and go for a few miles. Then they'll be on open prairie. Red Fox tells Chief. Yeah, I'll get back now. I'll see you again, Red Fox, after the raid. <laughs> so long. <coughs> get up! Apata! <laughs> man was from the wagon train. Sounded like Jake. I'd better warn Mr. Logan and the others. Easy, boy. Come on, get up there. Come on. Ho, 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 boy. As soon as Ted reached the encampment, he went to find Cy Logan. He found the man Jake with the wagon master. Mr. Logan, I... Well, this fellow Jake... I heard him a while ago talking to an Indian. Well, they what were... kind of crazy talk is that? As far as I know, Jake has been here at the camp right along. You're the one who's been missing, Ted. Where have you been? Well, I... I just went riding. I wanted to think. Uh-huh. It's mighty strange business. He rides all day, then leaves the camp at night to go riding so as he can think. Now, hold on, you. I'm sure you're the one who's plotting with the Indians to have this... Oh, we... you dirty yellow back. Now, hold on, hold on, Jake. No you start in trouble. I'll handle Ted. Well, then he better keep out of my way from now on. Mr. Logan, you must listen to me. Yeah, we listen to you explain about the axle on my wagon. I don't know anything about it. The axle on Jake's wagon was partly cut through, Ted. I said I don't know anything about it. I... Wait. Now I know. 
I heard him say that's how he delayed the wagon train. So as to give the Indians a chance to gather. He's lying. He's making up a lot of nonsense to make us forget that accident. Mr. Logan, you must believe me. The Indians are planning to attack just after dawn. What Indians? The Indians, Jake, is... Well, I don't know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but he talked to a savage named Red Fox, and He's I know... He's been dreaming, Si. He's the only one that's left camp. We couldn't find him a while ago. I rested a while in my wagon, and then came back here to talk to you again just before this local hombre came back. Ted, if we weren't so far from home, I'd send you back, so help me. You've caused enough trouble without starting some crazy story about Indians waiting to attack. You'll have everybody nervous as cats if you keep on. They might better be nervous than to be taken by surprise or massacred. <laughs> you better go sleep it off, Harris. We'll have another talk in the morning, Ted. Come on, Jake, we'll check the camp before we turn in. Sure. <laughs> On a parallel trail a couple of miles away, the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved along the following dawn on a return trip from Fort Worth. Me see plenty sign, Kimasabi. Indians pass here during night. I've noticed some of the signs, Tonto. It may be friendly Indians going to a powwow. Mm, maybe. It looked like them head to Butterfield Trail. Yes, I know. But the Major told me there hasn't been any trouble in this territory with hostile Indians for months. He feels certain they've moved northward into the Indian Territory beyond the Red River. Mm, that good. I hope to see the day when they'll all be peaceful and friendly. Come on, Tilbury. Come, come, come. Ted had tossed all night, wondering what to do about what he'd heard. He began to realize what it meant to have other people dislike and distrust him. At dawn, the horses were hitched to the wagons, and in spite of Ted's warning, they prepared to leave. It was then that one of the men came riding to Cy Logan's wagon. Ho, oh, ho there! Ho, ho, ho! Cy, there's something mighty strange going on. Eh? Yeah, what's the trouble now? Jake's wagon is still unhitched. I looked for Jake, but found his saddle horse is gone, and most of his supplies are, too. What? And one of the women folk is sure she saw Jake packing his saddlebags, and then she saw him ride off in a hurry. Tarnation, take it. I wonder what Jake's up to. We have to get moving. Well, ordinarily, we just hitch up his horses and let someone else drive the team. But Mr. What? Logan, that's what Jake expected, I'm sure. He didn't think he'd be missed so soon. What are you talking about? I tried to tell you last night. This proves it. He's plotting with the Indians to attack this wagon train out in the plains. Holy mackerel. Dad, Dad, you must believe Ted. Why would he tell you such a story if it weren't true? It is true. I heard Jake talking to a redskin. All right, now I do believe you. Go warn the others, Jim. Tell him to unhitch the horses again and stay in the circle. If there's going to be an attack, we'll meet it here. Sai, we ought to try to get help. Fort Worth isn't too far from here. I've been through this way before. Why don't you try to get there? Uh, nope. I'm not going to do it. Let someone else risk his neck. I know those Indians. They'll be watching like hawks from every side. Nobody'd have a chance to get away from here now. Call everybody together right away. Hurry up. Yeah, sure thing. Get at this. Come on. Within a short time, everybody in the camp met near Sai's wagon. Listen, everybody. We're expecting Indians to attack us. I'll not tell you how I know right now, but I feel reasonably sure they will. Our only chance is to get through to Fort Worth and have them send help. I mean it here, or I'd try to get through. Now, who's willing to volunteer? The savages will be watching. Whoever tried it wouldn't live to get through. By thunder, then I'll try it myself. I'm not as young and spry as I used to be. No, Dad, but... please. They need you here, and, and you couldn't get through. You can't ride fast enough. Come on, Flora. Wish me luck. Hey, oh, oh, get it. Oh, look at you. Oh, uh, Harris is trying to escape the attack. Yeah, yeah. running off like a scared rabbit. Oh, oh, no, no, that's not true. Ted is going to get help, I'm sure of it. And I pray to heaven for the sake of all of us that he gets through safely. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. While Cy Logan was asking for a volunteer to go after help, Ted Harris mounted his horse and rode away. As he headed southward at a furious pace, two Indians suddenly rode from a grove behind him and gave chase. Indians? They were watching it. I haven't a chance. I have no gun with me. Get up. Come on, boy. Get up. The young man spurred his horse into a gallop, and for the first time in his life, Ted Harris whispered a prayer for help. <coughs> Suddenly, an arrow struck him, and Ted slumped forward over the saddle. But help was on the way. A masked man on a big white stallion and an Indian on a paint galloped forward toward him, their guns blazing at the pursuing savages. The Indians turned and fled. The Lone Ranger and Toto pulled rein and intercepted Ted's horse. Oh, oh, fella, oh, oh, Scott. Oh, sir, oh, easy, easy, fella. Big fella. easy, fella. We lift him from the saddle. Ah. Carefully, the masked man and Indian placed Ted on the ground. They removed the arrow and examined the wound, then bandaged it. Oh. Ted regained consciousness just as they finished. Uh, an Indian and a masked man. Were you the ones We're who did... We're friends. We drove off the Indians who were chasing you. You're wounded, but it isn't serious. Oh, I... I don't matter, mister. The others in the wagon train, the Indians are going to attack. Oh, tell me about it. Briefly, Ted told the Lone Ranger what he knew and that he had been on the way to get help. Then the Lone Ranger spoke. Otto, ride to Fort Worth for troops. I'll make Ted comfortable in the lean-to back in the woods. Then I'll try to get through the wagon train. Uh, easy, Scout, easy, fella. Get him up, Scout. Please, I'll be able to ride now. Let me go back with you. I want to help. I... I'd go crazy way to know what happened. All right, Ted, if you think you're able to ride, we'll start for the wagon train right away. When the Lone Ranger and Ted had almost reached the wagon train... The attack has begun, Ted. We can't get through to him now. We'll be able to see the attack when we reach the top of this rise. A moment later, the two men pulled to a stop. Hold, hold, hold. The wagons had been rearranged into a semicircle at the base of the cliff. The ground about the camp was hard and bare, but a hundred feet beyond the circle of wagons, the tall, dry prairie grass grew in abundance and stretched from there to a stream a quarter of a mile away. Jake had hoped to have the attack take place out on the prairie instead of in the present location. But when the wagons failed to break camp, the Indians decided to attack them where they were. The savages crossed the shallow stream in droves and rode back and forth on the wide strip of prairie grass, gradually moving closer. The Lone Ranger and Ted watched a moment. Then the masked man spoke. Ted, the stream over there gradually curves around and cuts into the range of cliffs. If we burned off that strip of dry grass, it would drive back those Indians for a time. The flames would stop at the stream and at the cliffs. That's right. It would drive them across the stream and keep them there, maybe. At least long enough for your Indian friend to arrive with help. Ordinarily, I wouldn't start a fire for fear it would get out of control and do damage. But burning off that strip will be all right. Easy, steady, big Easy, boy. It's the only thing to do to save the wagon train. The wind is blowing toward the stream, so it will drive the flames that way. The Indians will be forced to cross the stream for safety. The work fast, Ted. Come on. Moving quickly, the Lone Ranger and Ted Harris crawled along in the dried grass and bushes, touching off what soon became a wall of flame that moved toward the attacking Indians. Working. They're riding toward the stream ahead of the flames. This is our chance to reach the wagons. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, fill it. While the flaming wall drove back the Indians, the masked man and Ted Harris rode into the circle of wagons and stopped. Hold it, 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 he saved me from two Indians. The masked man thought of the idea of driving back the savages by burning off that strip out there. So that's what started it, eh? Sure was a good idea, mister. The savages have stopped attacking and have moved across the stream yonder. But the flames will soon die out. Then they'll come back to the attack stronger than ever. I sent my Indian friend Tonto to Fort Worth for help. Good, good. Ted, Ted, you've been hurt. Oh, not much, Flora. The masked man and Tonto bandaged the wound. I can't understand why you were unarmed, Ted. Well, I, I'm not used to a gun, mister. I can't understand about that mask. But since you helped Ted and all, I reckon we can trust you. Oh, thanks. Ted told me about one of your men who planned this attack with the Indians. Yes, that dirty polecat Jake Powell. He had me thinking Ted was a no-good young whippersnapper. I listened to Ted last night. We could have sent for help then. I suggest we get the men stationed. The flames have died down at the stream, and the Indians will soon be crossing again. All right, good idea. Come on, men. 
Get ready before those savages come yipping and yelling again for our scalp. Right. Uh, hurry up. The attack wasn't long in coming. In spite of the smoldering ground, the Indians moved across the shallow stream and then rode shooting and yelling toward the wagons. Ted had taken up a gun and knelt beside the Lone Ranger by Cy Logan's wagon. He watched in amazement as the masked man made every shot count, and he was filled with admiration and wonderment at the calm, steady manner of the Lone Ranger. Before long, Ted, too, was using more care and was surprised to find that he was able to hit more than one of the fast-moving targets in front of him. But time went on, and Cy Logan, with a worried expression on his face, moved in beside them. If help doesn't come soon, we are done for. I noticed more redskins crossing that stream yonder. As soon as one falls, it seems like two takes his place. Yes, this attack is planned ahead of time. Oh, what shooting. I reckon I'll never be able to shoot like that. I think you'll be able to do anything you set your mind on doing, Ted. You have nerve and courage. Yep, reckon he has it that, mister. Here they come again. The embattled pioneers were fast losing courage as the morning passed and the savages still continued the relentless attack. The Lone Ranger, with Ted Harris continually at his side, moved from one group to another with words of encouragement. We're still holding them back. Good work, men. We aren't going to hold them back much longer, mister. We're almost out of ammunition. What'll we do then? We'll decide that when the time comes, Ted. Right now, we'll check on the ammunition. Let's go. Ted and the Lone Ranger headed toward the wagon, which had carried boxes of ammunition, and which was situated on the left end of the semicircle, close to the cliff. As they approached the wagon, Ted suddenly pointed. Look, somebody just left the ammunition wagon and jumped behind those boulders at the base of the cliff. I'm sure it's Jake. All right, come on. Right. There's smoke coming from the wagon. Reaching the wagon, the Lone Ranger climbed quickly into the back and hastily threw out a pile of burning clothes and bedding. There. He tried to blow up the ammunition. He appeared among those boulders, firing at the Indians. Had his hat pulled down. Yeah, we saw it was a white man. Thought he was one of us. Indians could have followed him in. Oh, no. We were on the alert for Redskins. That's right. We didn't think of Jake coming back. Uh, he yelled, keep fighting, boys. Then jumped into the wagon. Now he fooled us plenty. Better get back to your post. All right. Oh. Meantime, Jake, crouching down, moved hurriedly among the boulders to the end of the cliff where he had left his horse. He mounted quickly and started to ride away. Get up there! Help! There goes Jake now! He's getting away! It was at that moment that Jake, who had started out to rejoin the Indians, heard something that quickly made him change his mind. Uh, the troopers riding in. I'll beat it through the woods over there. Get up there! Come on! The Lone Ranger also saw the troopers riding in at the far end of the smoldering strip of prairie land. Quickly mounting Silver. He, he, he gave his attention to catching the traitor who had caused the trouble. Come on, Silver! Jake moved through the woods where the trees were far enough apart not to hinder his flight. He turned and seeing the masked man moving closer, he fired. <laughs> The fast pace of his horse spoiled his aim, and having emptied his gun, he spurred his horse in the effort get to get away. But it was then that a lariat snapped through the air. All right, you. We go back and face the men of the wagon train. Come on. By the time the Lone Ranger and the much subdued Jake started back toward the wagons, the fight ended and the Indians had been driven off. Later, after the wounded had been taken care of, the Lone Ranger stood with Tonto and Ted Harris, talking to Cy Logan and some of the others. The troopers will turn Jake over to the civil authorities to be tried for inciting the Indians. Uh, to think we trusted that no good polecat. And to think none of you, including Dad, trusted Ted because none of you liked him. I deserved what treatment they gave me, Flora. I brought it all on myself. Spoken like a real man, Ted. That's right, Shy. I think Ted is a fine young fellow and a brave one. 
Inexperienced as he was, he risked his life for all of you. Well, uh, up to yesterday, Ted was sort of irresponsible and uh, irritating, you might say. But I think the men will agree with me when I say that now he's gone from youth to manhood in a big way. I agree with you, Mr. Logan. Well, I... I don't know what to say. You never do, Ted. <laughs> if that's the hit, I think it is, Ted. Well, Toddle and I'll stop by for the wedding. Uh, well, uh, Flora, you mean you... Well, well that you, is, I... You better wait till you and Flora are riding the wagon seat alone, Ted. Then find out just what she did. Oh, oh. Toddle and I'll ride on the head of the wagons and make sure there's no more danger. we we'll see you all again. I have a lot to thank you for, Mr. We all have. When Ted goes back east and tells about this journey... No, I'm going to stay in the west, Mr. Logan, for good. I'm glad to hear you say that, Ted. You, uh, you might say this was a journey to manhood for you, Ted Harris. Your dad's going to be mighty proud. I know he will be. Adios, Ted. Adios, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye. Ted, you made a wonderful friend when you met that masked man. Yeah, First friend I really ever did make. Oh, we're all your friends now, Ted. Oh, you know, I, I hope someday we'll find out who that masked man really is. Oh, I know who he is. The captain who brought the troopers told me. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Grace Beamer.